Hi everyone, welcome to the preview for day four of Cheltenham 2024. And the world's gone nuts since I made the last video for day three. Darn, the skeletons had four winners. But Cheltenham, he's, if he keeps this going, he'll be challenging Willie Mallins, I think. But it's, it's absolutely crazy. Um, looks like Nicky Henderson has taken out Sergino and uh, Shana Bob. So, yeah, big shame. You know, I'm not Nicky's biggest fan by any stretch, but a big yard having virtually no runners in the grade ones is, is really disappointing, and it, it makes it even more uncompetitive than it has been when you lose horses from a big yard like that. So I'll get on to my assessment of the... Final seven races at Cheltenham for this season. I have uh, only got, well, I've got half the bank to play, or a little bit uh, behind at the moment, but yeah, it's a rabbit out the heart I need, but I have put one bit up for um, Friday, so we'll go into that uh, in the video. So I'll just get on to all the races now. Losing a horse who's a odds-on favourite for the triumph is disappointing, and and it will definitely be, I would think now a Willie Mullins winner. There are other horses in here, of course, who could stake a claim, such as Nurburgring, and a couple of others, Mighty Bandit, maybe Salver from uh, Gary Moore's yard. But it does, in truth, look like it will be a winner for Willie Mullins. The Spring Juvenile would probably be the race to start with, and Kyrgyz won that race. I showed a good turn of foot, but Majbra was having his first attempt for Willie Mullins, and I think he could probably turn that form round. Banting was running a good race, um, stayed on well in fourth. Even Ethical Diamond could come into this. This is very, very tough, and... <clears throat> When you're looking at the races and you're thinking that there's going to be a, a fairly strong favourite in the race and it comes out, it changes your judgment on how you feel about a race. I think I know it's going to be favourite and like I don't really like tipping up favourites if I can avoid it. But I think that um, Majbra would probably be my pick now to improve, even though Stormheart didn't get a good run. Kyrgyz gets £7 again and maybe had more in the locker than than she showed last time. So a very tough opening race now that uh, Sergino's out. Watching the early races on the new course, um, well, the course they're using for the next, well, today and tomorrow, I have put up Absurd, and I do, I keep looking at Absurd as the winner of the county, but there are lots and lots of dangers in a handicap, and it isn't going to be easy for Absurd to win think it's a horse that's been I think kept for the county hurdle in truth um, and the form last time out as I said on bet 11 was you know franked by Slade Steele and Ballyburn both winning the novice hurdles at the meeting and both winning quite easily really as well and absurd although well beaten in those races I think was just being primed for this now people will say the king of Kingsfield beat him, like I said in the video, but I think this is the big day for Absurd, having won an Ebor. I am worried about the skeleton horse load is sued here. He he definitely looks uh, a horse of immense ability. He's beaten by a Berica Lord, but he was six lengths clear of the rest. And over a two mile handicap hurdle, that, that's a long way. And um, just beaten by a horse who was supplemented for the champion hurdle but ran no race because of the Henderson yard form so yes massive dangers in here like so, uh, so Scottish and Zenta were in the big race at Leopardstown last time out and both actually at various stages in the race looked like they were going to win so and, and there's plenty down the bottom that have good chances as well but my two in this race would be absurd and uh, low de Sud. The Bartlett's a race I have to revisit a bit now because I was going to be on Shanna Bob, although all week I've been thinking he may get taken out. It's a difficult race as well. The other horse I looked at in the race was Captain Teague, but it bothers me that 
that Charlo Hurdle seemed to bottom a lot of the horses out, and he was the one that won. So he's had a long break, but I think he might need it. It was a grueling, grueling race. I think he could have a decent chance here, though, because he is a good horse, and he's out of that bumper last season. Factor File came out of that. He won the Brown Advisory. A lot of good horses came out of that race. Lecky Watson came out of that race as well. He, he'd have a chance here. Reading Tommy Long, the favourite. He's got a good profile for this race, although Il Atlantique didn't exactly enhance the form. Last uh, yesterday, he was well beaten. I, I thought he'd run better than that yesterday. So a tough, tough race. I, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to with these two races where we've had the horses come out because I haven't really had the time to go back through and look and see which one I would fancy of the horses in it. Um, yeah, quite a difficult race, I think, at the moment. But if someone asked me, I, I think I'd probably just about come down on the side of Captain Teague. But it is difficult, um, especially when the horse you fancy and have been looking at all season is taken out with a couple of days to go before the race. The Gold Cup, it looks awful like the favourite Galopin de Champ. As long as he runs his race, will complete the double of two Gold Caps. He, he is the class act in the race. He, it's hard to see him beaten. He has really improved in his last two runs this season. He was well on top in last season's Gold Cup and I would think he would probably be able to beat Foster Slow, who has beaten him twice, once at the end of last season and one at the start of this season. I just, I think it's, I think it's Galloping Deschamps' race. Uh, as long as there's no mishaps, I think he's the most likely winner. The ground looks like it's coming for Jerry Colomb and for Korak Rambler. And you could see both running good races. I think if I had to have an alternative to uh, Gallop in Duchamp, then it would be Korak Rambler, who's won twice at the track um, in two Altimas in the last two seasons. So he is no forlorn hope for Lucinda Russell at 20 to 1. I think he'll run quite a big race, whether he's good enough to get in the frame. I'm not sure, but I think he could run a big race, a, a better race than he has been running this season. I think he'll perform or pick right up. Uh, in this race. Now, I give him a good chance, actually, but I think Galpin the shot the most likely winner and Kodak Rambler, the each way shout. Most people wouldn't go near the Fox Hunters, but I love this division this season because I'm a huge fan of Ferns Locke. Now, being a fan of Ferns Locke makes you a little bit biased towards him. And he's a fantastic jumper. He's a great horse. And I've loved him since I've seen him the first time he ran as a five-year-old on the track. I'd love him to win. He has got serious opponents. And it is really worrying that the confidence behind It's On The Line is quite intense. I was told a couple of weeks ago that Corbett's Cross and It's On The Line was... A very good double and the yard were very confident on both and it does make you worry especially when the ground's gone in favour of it's on the line rather than Fern's lock but it's hard to go against your uh, initial judgment and your bias that you feel Fern's lock and you want Fern's lock but the other horse is, is very good as well and they seem to be getting things coming in their favour rather than yours. So a very difficult choice. And especially when the winner from last year, Premier Magic's in the race and he's been a bit sort of pushed out a little bit like nobody fancies him, but he's he's won the race before. So he, he's no forlorn hope. He, he has to have a big chance and he will have a big chance. So very, very difficult when your your heart is saying Fern's Lock and you know that he's got a good chance. But your head is saying, listen to the people who've already given another horse that's absolutely bolted in and hard held in Corbett's Cross. And now they've got another one coming out. But, you know, 
could just do the same. But I don't think he'll win like that, though. I think Ferns Lock will give him a right good race. I, I wouldn't like to pick between the two. I suppose if people... I want Ferns Lock to win. I, I've backed Ferns Lock personally for decent sums, so I want Ferns Lock to win. Whether I'd pick him if someone had a gun at my head, I'm not sure. But, yeah, it has to be Ferns Lock for me because of my allegiance. But... It's on the line will be a massive, massive opponent in this race. The Mayor's Chase is a difficult race. I have Dino Blue's a short, short price favourite, and if she stays, she will more than likely win. But I do think that Limerick Rate Lace will put it up to her, and I think on the ground and in the conditions, I think you could quite easily go with Limerick lace each way in a single bet you're going to get most of your money back I can't see her being out the three ah, and she has a, a reasonable chance of turning the favourite over and maybe not a, a you know you wouldn't say it was 50-50 because it's not or the odds would be different but you have got a good chance of turning the favourite over but Dino Blue's been running in grade one so she is the pick but I think if I was having a bet it would be on Limerick lace each way in this race, um, I think I don't see her being out of the three, and I think she could quell pick it up and win. The final race of the festival, you know, you feel utter deflation when you get to this race, and almost before this race, you feel like, oh, that's it over, another year to go before we get it back again. Um, in this race, I have. A real, I, I really fancied Waterford Whispers earlier in the week and a couple of weeks ago, but the price is nowhere near what you'd want now. It's, it was 14s and 12s, and now it's 4s. And like I've said about the bookmakers in the, in the bet video, they're just cutting anything that has a chance of winning to a price where they just don't want punters to back. Either that or... Foolish Panthers will just take any price they're offered. It's, it's craziness. Um, Key de Bourbon's been a massive tor talking horse since the betting opened for this race. Everybody seems to want Key de Bourbon. I would prefer Waterford Whispers, but the horse I'm going to put up on my video is uh, Ocasle de Mont of Willie Mallins with uh, one run since he got to the yard, eighth in the Betfair Hurdle, which is strong form, very strong form that race, um, the Betfair Hurdle. I think he'll come on a lot for the race. He's got a low weight. He's been a bit dismissed. It could be that Key de Bourbon's just absolutely streets ahead of some of these. Waterford Whispers is undoubtedly ahead of the handicapper, way ahead of the handicapper, but you need to be almost a mile ahead of the handicapper in this sort of race. So... I would say that um, I'd go looking for an each way bet. And, and I think Ocasle de Mott will give a good run in this race for an each way bet. And uh, I would take him at 12 to 1. So, like I've said, the bets at the moment um, a bit down. We can't make that up, but it simply isn't going to be possible doing it with a each way bet. So it's going to have to be a winner. So with £200 out the bank left to play with, we've put £45 on Absurd at 13 to 2 for the County Hurdle. And that will leave us with 155 to play with. Um, and we don't need to get a massive, huge return to turn this into profit. But we do have to get a winner because it's just not going to be feasible to put an each way bet on that's going to return that sort of profit. So I'll do my best. We've had six fantastic years. If I can't do it, then so be it. I gave it a go. I, I was on the back foot with that stupid bet on Gallup Marceau. And um, actually, she didn't run that bad a race, in truth. But that's for another day. We will go through the review if I haven't managed to make a profit. But um, we're still in there fighting, but we were doing this 
a couple of years. We're doing it too often. So let's see if I can pull it round on day four. Do have a couple of fancies, a couple of horses that I think will run well. And hopefully we can pull it round uh, and turn the deficit into profit. So I'd like to thank everyone for watching Cheltenham Chart over the year. May do some videos for Aintree, Punchestown. Definitely, without any question, we'll do a bet review and a review of Cheltenham. But thank you all very much for watching during the season. I hope you've had a winning Cheltenham Festival. I hope I can turn the video bets into a winning Cheltenham Festival as well. But personally, you should be doing your own bets and hopefully you've done well with them. So thank you all for watching and have a good final day at the festival. Bye for now.